speak those things that are not as thought they are. I am in heaven, and what I speak is. Those things I see, I speak. God is in me, and I see into life what I am. Whatever I can see, I will see. Whatever will be, I must first see in me. I see life which was first unseen, and that life was in me. I am in heaven, and heaven is me. Eve is the mother of Adam, who gave him life. Although she came from Adam, the earth was made for man to eat of her fruit, so that he might have life. She gave him life when he ate of her fruit, the correct order of things. Eve, the mother earth of all the living, birthed man, although she first came from him, for him, your kingdom is in you. What man talks about and what a man imagines in his heart, I mean, sinful a man or a man who perceives himself a certain way, what that man conceptualizes about himself and his circumstance is different from what God sees about that same man. God sees in man his only begotten son, meaning that God only has one son and that son represented by Adam is mankind. God only has one son. He doesn't have a wicked son and a good son. God knows that his seed is in his only son and that son is righteous. Man has the free will or man has the liberty to see himself as he desires to see himself. God does not restrict man's perception of himself because God wants man to be free. And that brings us to the story of Adam and Eve written by God and the story of Adam and Eve as narrated by man. Man's story begins with man in a garden in Eden, separated from the earth. We have to understand man's knowledge and man's handiwork in this story because man sees Eden as a different place than where the earth is. Man sees Eden as a different creation, as if Eden is heaven and the earth is the fallen state of that once paradise. That's not God's story. Man sees his nature as that of a fallen being because man looks at himself and sees his actions. Man knows his own thoughts. And so then man says about himself and about others that since God is mad at me because what I do in the dark, then God is mad at the world because every other man is like me. Therefore, God put a tree in the center of the garden. I want you to understand this. I want you to see this, that man who is narrating or who has narrated the story for us, man believes that God took man. But first, let's talk about this man that God placed. God formed a man out of his own perfect self. So out of the perfect spiritual God, man came, man was produced, man emanated. Man is the natural occurrence of life. Man is the representation of life. God took that spiritual being because spirit gives birth to spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh. Spiritual man, Adam, 
was manifested as a result of God's righteousness, life had to come. Life, there was not a decision made for life to exist because God is life. Life cannot resist God and be death. Life had to come from God's perfection and God's righteousness. Man is evidence of God's righteousness because man is life, trees are life, grass, all the creation represents the life that was in God. Man believes that God put a tree of life in the garden so that man could eat from that tree and receive life. That is the first era. That is the first evidence of man's thought that has changed from righteousness to wickedness and condemnation. Man is life. He doesn't have to eat to receive life. Man is life. Life is a natural flowing occurrence when you are dealing with righteousness. When you are dealing with perfect spirit, the representation of perfect spirit is a perfect life. The life center or man's nature, man's innate, intrinsic, and inherent life that exists in him, that life is perfect. There's nothing that man has to do except live and man is perfect. Sinful man says that the tree in the middle of the garden was there so that the man could choose. Well, let's look at the different mentalities. Love made the man free, although sinful man condemned the man and kicked him out of the garden. Let me show you the contrast. Let me highlight for you the line of separation there because there's a distinct line of separation between the two. God gave man the tree of life. That was a free gift. Man did not have to choose that. Man did not have to choose the tree of life. God created man with the tree of life. Man, God created man alive. God created man with his breath in man already. When man was manifested, there was nothing else that man had to do. However, sinful man says that all man does not have access to the tree of life anymore. And because man chose the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, then he no longer had access to the tree of life in Eden. Well, let me show you how that falls apart. That all falls apart because the foundation that is built on is sin. God cannot see sin. Sin doesn't come from God. God does not even recognize evil or Satan as an entity because God only knows himself. And that's the reason that man reflects God and man can reflect nothing else but God. However, man can live a lie. Jesus said of Satan that you are the father of lies. Your very nature is a lie and you've been lying since or from the beginning. I want you to read this verse from John 8, 44 and decide if you believe it or not. If you believe it, why then do you not see that the devil is nothing more than a man-made idol? a lie created by Adam and Eve to cover themselves. He was a murderer from the beginning and has not stood in the truth 
because there is no truth in him. When he tells a lie, he speaks from his own nature, because he is a liar and the father of liars. That means then that if Satan is the father of lies, then that means that nothing about Satan can affect anybody who's in God and all are in God. Your authority opens the door for there to be an enemy. We create our own enemies. Man has life within himself. Man can create darkness. Maybe you didn't hear me. I'll say it again. Man has life within himself. However, man may live in darkness if he chooses to live in darkness. Man can create darkness for himself and man has created darkness for the world when he said that man had the opportunity to eat from a tree, but he ate from the forbidden tree and then God kicked him out of the garden. Let me tell you how that story really went. Because God created the earth from love. And because God created from love, man, sinful man, man who looks at himself and says that I cannot be the receiver of this. There is no way that I could be so good that God loves me so much and I do all of these things in the darkness. Man has condemned himself and man then condemns the entire world and he uses God as his power. God never condemned man, neither did God condemn the world. That's why Jesus said, I'm doing the works of my father. I do not come here to condemn the world because my father does not condemn the world. We don't see that man must learn that he should grow and that he should evolve. The Bible says, look at your screen so that you can verify the scripture. The Bible says that today I have become your father. That's one hint. Today, it marks a space or a place in time that I have become your father. The Bible also says that to David, the Bible says that you will not build a house for me. It will be your son who will build a house for me. David was talking about or concerned with the physical things. God said to David through the prophet, you will not build a house for me. It will be your son. And when your son, I want you to listen to the second part because it definitely stands over and against organized religious thought on this particular subject. It says that when my son does wrong, we gloss over that. When my son does wrong, then I will discipline him or he will be disciplined by the rod of man. And he will learn according or based on what he has suffered. You see, God's discipline is love. God's discipline is not punishment. It is designed to cause you to grow. God's love, God's discipline is like a, the rudder on a ship. It guides you. It points you to the direction that you should go. It can't harm your nature. What it does is it causes pain to your flesh. No, don't go this way. Oh, I went and accepted this job and this job has been full of trouble because God doesn't want you there. God doesn't attack your nature. He does not harm you. He guides you. Oh, I love this woman. I love this man. I want to be with this man. This woman and man are nothing but trouble. It hurts to stay with this man and this woman. God may be directing you. You see, love directs. Sin destroys. Since man is life, 
God treats man like his son because man is his son. The fear of sin, the fear of death, and thoughts that come from our own inner being based on who we see ourselves to be, thoughts that are predicated upon the fallen man. That's who we become. We have become and we have a religion or a philosophy that is also based on fallen man. And so then it's, it's like what Paul said, that you see things according to the lens on your eyes. We see things through the lens of our hearts. There are people who say if you have, or philosophers who teach that our outer environment is only the reflection of our inner or that our inner state becomes the outer form. So then we see the world according to how we see ourselves. And so this brings us to Adam and this man, Adam, being the glory of God. You see, sinful minds will not allow us to see Adam as the glory of God. That's who Adam was. And that's who Adam remains this to be this day. We are Adam. We are literally, not just in theory, not just philosophically, we are literally Adam because God only had one son. We are the glory of God. Jesus said, may they have, may they receive. Check the Bible on this. Jesus in John, in the book of John, Jesus said, May they all be one, as you, Father, are in me, and I am in you. May they also be in us, so the world may believe you sent me. I have given them the glory you have given me. May they be one as we are one, I in them and you in me. May they be made complete in you, I in them and you in me, therefore you in them. Our minds cause us to think that that's something that has to happen. That has already happened. Jesus was praying that we would see that. Those to whom your glory has already been given, because Jesus knew that man is the glory of God, man is the manifested, the visible form of the spiritual. So Jesus already knew that and he said it. But with our fallen state, with our minds today, we cannot comprehend that. We can't reach out and take hold of that with our minds and then own it for ourselves because we have fallen and those who have taught us are preachers of the fallen philosophy. That's all it is. Theology is only a religious philosophy. We are the glory of God. And we allow ourselves to be fooled to believe that the glory of God, the son of God, Adam, was so foolish that he didn't even ask the woman a question about the fruit that he was offered. Eve, according to the story that man has written, Eve gave Adam a fruit and he had nothing to do with it. That's why it's worded the way that it is, that Eve gave Adam a fruit and he took it and he ate it. No conversation. Now, this is the glory of God. Listen to what God has entrusted Adam with. God gave Adam, he created, if you use the Genesis story, he created a place for Adam. Now, we, the new Canaanites, know that that place for Adam is the entire world. Fallen man believed that God only gave them one corner, 
we know that every place you place your feet, just as well as everything you put your hands to, this is what our father said, whatever you put your hands to will prosper. Wherever you place your feet, that right there is holy ground. Listen, we are walking on holy ground. The soil is not contaminated, our minds are. So we take evil thought with us wherever we go. And this glorified man who had neither mother nor father, we believe that he didn't even ask a simple question to his wife and say, Eve, where did you get this from? As a matter of fact, Eve, I've already seen this tree. So I know what grows on that tree. Do you really want me to take this and eat it? Adam asked questions because Adam is the glory of God. He wasn't just innocent in the story as if the woman was the guilty one and Adam was just a, a victim. Adam was not a victim. God does not hold a victim responsible for being overpowered. Adam was not overpowered. Adam was a willing participant, but that is the fallen belief. That is that fallen philosophy that is predicated upon sin. Sin then is greater than righteousness. When you fall into that line of thinking, well, what happened really then, Minister Hampton, Brother Hampton, what really, really happened then? I'm glad you asked because I've been waiting to tell you. Eve gave Adam an idea. This is man. This story identifies man's growth and development. Eve gave Adam, since she is the mother of the living, she gave Adam an idea. Adam used his mind to think about that to create what he wanted. Adam thought about the tree. They looked at the serpent in the tree and they understood from that serpent or by that serpent's ways, the way how clever the serpent was. They looked at the serpent and said, this is the tree of knowledge. Well, this wasn't a bad thing. It was not a learning is not a bad thing, because if you notice, God said man has now become one of us knowing, first of all, knowing good and evil. What is evil? Evil, first of all, is man not knowing himself. That's the source of all evil, man not knowing himself. And what else is evil? The other part of that, the second part of that, because it's twofold, not knowing yourself and then living a lie. So there is your free will. You are free to live a lie. However, it is evil for you to be anything less than what or who God made you to be. So that is the source of all evil. Man or God's son with all power, who has been glorified, who is glorified, that man not knowing himself is dangerous. He creates all sorts of demons and ghosts and gods because he doesn't know himself. He walks in fear because he doesn't know himself. He is able to do that because that is a part of the man's learning and his growth. And what happened to the man after he knew good and evil? Now he's able to make a choice. So he knows his true self. He knows that self. He knew that self from the time he was created, from the time he was made in the image of God. He knew himself. He knew that self. Now, once he ate, his eyes were open to something else. And what was his eyes open to? Now, he's no longer under God's shelter. He 
now had to think for himself. He now gained. He didn't lose anything by eating. He gained knowledge. He now learned how to see things for himself. Now watch how this unfolds. The man took the fruit and he ate from the woman. He took that idea and they discussed it because you don't eat without having a discussion. And you talk about the animals that are on that tree and you say to your wife, well, baby, you see this serpent on that tree? That serpent is not dead. That serpent is alive. That is a snake. That snake is the craftiest. It's the most cunning. And it's the wisest animal that God had ever created in the animal kingdom. We are greater than that. This is man's evolution. Once he was now able to think for himself and see things differently, he saw what God made, and then he saw his own ability to create. How do I know that that is a fact? Taking this story that man has given us, how do I know that's a fact? You see, man shaped and formed the story so that he could understand it. But there's a message behind this message or that message, and that message is... Although God had created a kingdom for the man, the kingdom was not visibly, that's a key word, the kingdom, your kingdom is not visibly complete until you give birth to it. Now everything, every particle, all the substance is here on earth for you to produce your kingdom because God gave you kingdom building in you, you yourself are a kingdom and then Adam ate and he saw himself as naked because he understood that he could clothe himself and that those fig leaves had other usages than just leaves on a tree this is man's evolving into thriving man prehistoric man traveling through the earth, Abraham leaving Ur of the Chaldeans, coming into contact with other kingdoms, with kingdoms. He was a tribe. He was a group of people who didn't even have a nation. God is building us into nations by using our minds, by setting us free. Man says that that man got kicked out. I'm telling you that God set Adam free to become the son of God. God has given each one of us a kingdom here on earth. That's why you have your king, the queen, and your princes and princess, your sons and your daughters, and then your wife, your husband, and then your wife. That is the kingdom. So as Abraham is traveling from Ur of the Chaldeans to Canaan, Canaan, he is growing by what he is now learning, what he's coming into contact with. And Adam looked at the fig tree. There's no wonder Jesus cursed the fig tree. And Adam made clothing from the fig tree. Because Adam looked now at himself and he looked at the tree and he understood that he was a God, and he had the power to speak those things that are not as though they are. This is a part. This is a process of knowing this is not a bad thing. He didn't get kicked out. God blessed him and set him free. He was ready now to start his own kingdom. Sinful man see this as a bad thing. Sinful man views knowledge as a bad thing, especially when it sets you free from his captivity. Adam looked at the fig leaves and said to his wife, you know what? We don't have to be naked anymore. Adam knew the difference between righteous and unrighteous. His eyes had now been opened to it. 
There is no such thing as unrighteous in the first place because anything that is not righteous is a lie. Adam now started to see the trees differently. Adam was able to now see a kingdom within a kingdom. In God's kingdom, in, listen to some teaching here today. In my father's house, there are many mansions, there are many rooms in my father's house. And so Adam said to himself that I see this tree, I see these animals whom I have named. And now it's time for me to give a name to this tree. And I see that this tree, although it came from a seed, all of the potential of this tree is in the seed. Can you look at the seed and see a house, even though this tree is only a seed? Can you see your kingdom in God's kingdom? So Adam said to his wife, you know, if we take this fig leaf, and we take that stuff over there that looks like a string. It looks like it's just a heap of twine. It's, it's useless. If we take this one cord and tie it with another cord, and at first we only had a thin piece of a thread, but if we take these things and start to twine, you can watch a monkey. And religious man don't even want us to have sense, the sense of a primate. He calls our growth and advancement wicked as if we are doing something that God doesn't understand. God wanted us to replenish. Listen to that word. We are not only talking or specifically talking about sex. God didn't even have to tell us to have sex. That is our innate ability, animals have sex. You see, that is the fallen man's philosophy. He feels that God has to tell intelligent beings to have sex and to populate the earth with physical bodies. The fact that Adam put two fig leaves together, tied them together and covered himself. That's the ability of man to think for himself. I'm telling you we have to tear down this fallen kingdom. And Adam told his wife we can put these things together and we can make our clothing. And then Adam eased right up to Eve's ear and he put on that smooth date night voice. And he said, and you know what else, baby? We don't have to be subject to undesirable elements. We can live like kings and queens, baby, if you know what I mean. We no longer have to be subjects of the earth. We could be rulers, baby. The two of us together, we could be rulers of the earth. We can build a roof over our heads with these fig leaves. These fig leaves have a twofold meaning. We have covered our true selves with religion. We are spiritual beings. But we've allowed man to teach us more about death, dying, and sickness. And after the man clothed himself, God was watching him. And God said to the man, you don't have to live in my kingdom. You don't, man. You have the authority to build your own. But as you go out and build your own, don't forget me. 
Understand that I'm in you. I will be with you for always. I will never forsake you. And don't you forsake me. A friend of mine asked me, this seems like you don't need God anymore. And I said these words, and I hope you understand. I said, listen, I need God. I said, I just don't need religion about God. I want you to hear that again because someone needs to hear this. I do need God. What I don't need, though, is man's religion about God because serving God is about my own personal walk. I don't need man to tell me what I have to do or what I must do as evidence of a relationship with my God. Man doesn't control me. Also, it's not a matter of if I need God. That's not even the matter. The matter is, do I have God? And whether I believe that I have God or not, God has me. And God has everybody else, regardless if you know that or not. God has us. It's not a matter of if I know God's name. We let man talk that junk to us about do we know God's name? I want to know. This is what's on my mind at night. Does God know my name? That's what matters to me. Because Adam never, I never heard Adam call God's name. Adam had a relationship with God, though. So God is in me, and I don't have to call his name. When your God lives outside of you, you must call his name to get his attention, as if he is not everywhere at once. Just as a person does not say to himself, self, do this, or say that. One who knows that God is in him does not have to call God, because God is. I'll tell you how I call God's name, and it's not audibly. It's not with my mouth. This is how I call God's name, by being God to God's creation, by being Lord over the kingdom that God has given me. That's how I call God's name. I don't have to tell the animals. Jesus did not have to tell the demons who he was. The creation that's waiting in eager expectation for the children of God to be revealed. That creation is waiting for you to walk in your God-given authority. Because the universe, all of the physical substance, will start to move just like Adam just like it said in Genesis, in the garden, in Eden, it said that Adam heard the presence of God in the garden. Creation, this physical substance, feels the vibration of the Son of God. And it starts to shift. It starts to move. Things start to change when you start walking in your God-given authority. Things fall in place for you. And you don't even have to speak. But when you do speak, you should know that you are speaking in the name of God. You are coming in the name of the Son of God. But man has taught everybody how to pray in the name of Jesus. The problem with the world today is we don't know how to come in the name. We are the seed of God's creation. And God's seed is in all of us. God's spirit, the reason he knows us, the reason he has expectation of us, and I'm talking high expectations, is that God knows us. And it is when we know ourselves 
that we will no longer, I want you to listen to this. Can you hear me when I say this? When we come in to the knowledge of ourselves, fig leaves will no longer be our covering. We will no longer be hidden by our physical skin. 